Hello, this is the American Medical Association's COVID-19 update. Today, we have our weekly look at the numbers, trends, and latest news about COVID-19 with AMA's Chief Health and Science Officer, Dr. Mira Irons in Chicago. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer, also in Chicago. Dr. Irons, this is a pretty different holiday weekend for the fourth. How did this one compare to where we were last year? Oh, absolutely. Totally different. For the most part, we saw Americans return to their July 4th rituals. And we're obviously in a completely different place because of the vaccines. You know, if we think back a year ago, and I think it's important to think back, um, a year ago, the United States celebrated Independence Day largely by staying home. The country went into last year's holiday weekend, having set records for new coronavirus cases in six out of the nine previous days. At that point, about 600 people were dying from the virus each day. On July 2nd, the country set what was then a record, 53,000 new reported cases. Governors were forced to slow their reopening plans, and in the months that followed, the pandemic grew much, much worse. So compare that to this year with reports of new cases holding steady at about 12,000 a day, the lowest since testing became widely available. The US average of fewer than 300 daily deaths from COVID-19 is a decline of 23% over the past two weeks. Hospitalizations are also dropping. You know, we also saw people traveling again though. About 48 million Americans were expected to travel from July one to five, a 40% jump over last year. TSA reported screening nearly 2.2 million people on July 3rd alone, the most since March 5th, 2020, about a week before the WHO declared a pandemic. And my family and I were among those travelers over the weekend and glad to be able to see our in-law, my in-laws on the Jersey Shore uh, for the first time in almost two years. And so thank you, science, and thank you, medicine, for that vaccine. Uh, uh, Dr. Irons, I think uh, thinking about the vaccine, we came up a little bit short in terms of the goal that uh, President Biden had set uh, in terms of getting 70% of Americans at least one shot. Uh, you know, where do we stand and what does that mean for our ongoing efforts from here on? You know, it's true. Um, we, we have fallen short of that goal, but the White House is putting a positive spin on it, pointing out that as of last week, 70% of Americans ages 30 and up have received at least one shot. Um, the most recent numbers show 182.7 million Americans have received at least one shot, which is 55% of the population. Of those, 157.6 million are fully vaccinated or 47.5% of the population, just under half. You know, in, in looking at the president's number, a little more than 67% of people in the country, 18 and older, have gotten at least one vaccine dose. That said, about 100 million people in the country have yet to receive a single vaccine shot, and the supply of vaccines far outstrips the demand. Public health officials are struggling to motivate the vaccine holdouts. That's the larger problem right now. Even with ample supply, the vaccination drive continues to remain relatively flat. Well, if anyone needed any uh, motivation, uh, the Delta variant spread that we're seeing across the country should provide that. A lot of danger there. Can you talk uh, a little bit about you know, how that's driving the numbers across the country? Oh, absolutely. You know, as we always do, we'll start with the numbers, you know, 33,748,698 people have been diagnosed with COVID um, and tragically 605,933 people have died. Um, you know, what we saw as, as vaccinations ramped up was a sharp drop in cases through the spring, but that's now leveled off. Um, the spread of the Delta variant remains worrisome for the unvaccinated. Dr. Rochelle Walensky, director of the CDC, issued her gravest warning yet last Thursday when she said that nearly 25% of new infections have been linked to Delta, up from 6% in early June. She said she expects the Delta variant will eclipse the Alpha variant in the coming weeks. According to more recent estimates released by the CDC, that has in fact already happened. Um, data updated by the CDC on Tuesday evening shows the Delta variant was estimated to account for 51.7% of all new cases across the country as of July 3rd. And in some parts of the country, the Delta strain now accounts for more than 80% of new infections, including some Midwestern states um, like Missouri, Kansas, and Iowa. Um, the CDC has said that variant proportions are dynamic and difficult to predict due to reporting delays, the presence of multiple variants and changing incidents. But a little over a month ago, the data showed the Delta variant was estimated to account for just 3% of all new cases in the US. So it's rising. 
And that's uh, pretty scary stuff. And we're starting to see that play out in these areas with low vaccination rates. How is that kind of looking? Uh, that's, and, and I think it's changing really over the course of the last month. Oh, absolutely. And it is tied to low vaccination rates. You know, essentially the Delta variant is creating hotspots, um, particu particularly in, as you mentioned, states with low vaccination rates. In some parts of Texas, Arkansas, and Missouri, for instance, there's been a sharp rise in cases. In Missouri, for example, caseloads increased more than 40% from two weeks earlier. Dr. Walensky's reported a thousand counties across the country where fewer than 30% of the residents are vaccinated. The Delta variant poses the greatest risk in these areas. States are responding. For example, state officials in Nevada are redoubling efforts to push the vaccine amid one of the worst outbreaks in the country right now. It's focusing those efforts on Clark County, home to Las Vegas, where the governor announced he would be deploying additional mobile vaccine units and offering grants to community organizations doing direct outreach to vaccine hesitant residents. In Arkansas, the governor urged unvaccinated people celebrating the holiday weekend to remain masked or socially distant. Arkansas has 300 people hospitalized with COVID-19 for the first time since March. It is heartbreaking because, you know, a lot of the deaths are uh, obviously preventable uh, with the vaccine and we're starting to see stories of you know, uh, physicians kind of back at it uh, in that kind of overwhelming situation and understandably uh, uh, on pretty low reserves in terms of being yes. uh, tired at this point. Um, you know, with this kind of spread of the variant, you know, uh, some states, uh, are they back to urging even vaccinated people to wear masks? What's the guidance? Yes, as some states are, and it is a little confusing. So yes, the CDC guidelines have not changed, but some states are urging, rather than mandating, the use of masks in certain high-risk situations. So for example, in Los Angeles, public health officials have urged residents to begin wearing masks again in public places, including restaurants and stores. Um, the city had dropped its public mask mandate June 15th. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker said last Wednesday that residents of the state, even fully vaccinated, should begin to wear masks again in high-risk situations, including crowded indoor gatherings. So while the CDC has stood behind its advice that people who are fully vaccinated against the coronavirus do not need to wear masks, Dr. Walensky has said that there are instances where local authorities might impose most stringent measures to protect the vaccinated. And this is the important part of this. Um, she said, those masking policies are not to protect the vaccinated, they are to protect the unvaccinated. Um, and, and also continued, everybody should consider their own situation if they would feel more comfortable wearing a mask. Well, to get those vaccination rates uh, moving again, there have been renewed efforts at the federal level. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about uh, some of the ones that are most significant? Yeah, absolutely. On Tuesday, the president called for employers to set up clinics at work and to offer paid time off for workers as part of a renewed push to reach Americans who remain unvaccinated. You know, he outlined five areas of concentration, all avenues he had already pursued. The first, targeted community by community door-to-door -door outreach. The second, a fresh push to get vaccines to primary care doctors. Third, a boost in efforts to get vaccines to pediatricians and other providers who serve younger people so that adolescents ages 12 to 18 can get their shots. Um, and finally, expanded mobile clinic efforts and the workplace changes. The government's also announced the formation of surge response teams, and these uh, intended to combat the Delta variant by deploying additional expertise and supplies to hotspots. The staff for these surge response teams would come from CDC, FEMA, and HHS. The dedicated teams working with communities at higher risk for are already experiencing outbreaks due to the spread of the Delta variant and their low vaccination rate will include a mix of virtual support and on the ground um, personnel helping deploy additional supplies as requested by local officials such as testing or th therapeutics. And finally, you know, as Dr. Fauci said in a recent interview, the last mile is always the hardest. We're actually on the last quarter mile. Well, that is progress, but still that hard part to go. Thanks so much, Dr. Irons, for your perspective. Uh, we'll be back with another COVID-19 update soon. In the meantime, for resources on COVID-19, visit ama-assn.org slash COVID-19. Thanks for joining us. Please take care.